Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. A lot of you guys were actually curious how I started doing research. Especially research is one of the main factors for me to be able to get into very top graduate programs with bad grades. So in today's video, I'm gonna cover how I started doing research as well as some tips that might help you to land your research position as well as how I landed a research internship position at Harvard. Before I jump into the research section, I want to give you a little bit walkthrough about my background. So I actually had a math degree. Um, I went to University of Waterloo and majored in math. And the reason I majored in math wasn't because I was passionate in math or I was very good at math. It's just I know that I was bad at physics, I was bad at chemistry, so engineering route was over for me. Yeah, what's left? So math was kind of one of the last options that's left, so I just decided to give it a try. Shout out to University of Waterloo. It actually has this amazing co-op opportunities. So I think between each study terms, you get either four months or eight months terms that you can apply for different internships or co-op opportunities as long as the position is related to your study. While I was in math, a lot of my classmates were actually very interested in finance because with math itself, you have to combine with other fields of science so that you can actually utilize math. Finance was what, one of the hot choices. So I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do at that point with my degree, but I just want to give it a try at everything. So finance was one of my main goals while I was in undergrad. So I tried really hard and finally landed a position working as quantitative analyst in the finance sector. And the experience itself was amazing. I had really amazing colleagues and they were able to help me during their free time. They offered me finance crash course, which was super helpful. So I had a blast at that position. But at the same time, I didn't really feel connected with what I was doing. So in my last, very last semester, I still have one co-op left. I decided to try something new, anything but finance. There's a lab at Harvard Medical School posted an internship position working in their lab, um, mainly doing dry lab work. So I saw that position, I'm like, let's apply. I really wanted to try something new and research is one of those things that I actually never have the opportunity to do. So yeah, I decided to give it a try and went through the interview process with them. I remember it was around 30 minutes and they were doing it in a rapid fire question style where they just give me a lot of questions and then I had to answer them very fast. If I don't know anything, I just pass. I just say pass. So it was a really nerve wracking experience and I remember half of them was um, linear algebra related questions and the other half was biology related questions and I totally blew the biology part just because I didn't even take biology in high school, okay? So it wasn't my domain and I know there's DNA but I can name any second. I was really surprised that they ended up giving me an offer. So I was very thrilled. The whole co-op lasted for eight months and I went back to school for my last semester study. And after graduating in undergrad, I went back to work with them for another year. So in total, I think I have around close to two years experience working in research. And just to prove that I actually worked at Harvard, here is my badge. That's me. I had baby face, but... <laughs> Ever since then, I actually completely fell in love with the field. It's definitely hard work, but I was very fortunate enough to be able to have that experience. So now let's talk a little bit about how you can apply for a research position. So I think there's mainly two ways to apply for research. The first way is to apply through a proper uh, internship programs, especially summer internship programs. I know at least for Harvard, they have their own summer internship research program that mainly tailored to undergraduate students who are very passionate about science and then are thinking about going into PhD while they're in undergrad. I believe there are other universities out there um, have those summer internship programs. So if you're thinking about doing a full-time research Research, I would check out different universities and see whether they have summer internship programs available that specifically tailored to undergrad students. So I think that's what I did. Essentially, I applied through a proper co-op um, program. The second route you can take is um, as an undergrad student or a master's student, if you're interested in doing research while still being a student you can apply for research assistant role in different labs. So for example, I'm currently 
a first year master's student and I'm actually doing research for credit this semester. So the first thing you need to do if you decide to do research is to to search for all the faculty members in your university or the universities you're interested in. Most of them have their lab website posted and then they will showcase their publications or what they're working on. By having a list of the profs that you want to work with, it gives you a good idea of what type of project you're interested in, and then thinking about what you can bring to the table when doing research with them. The second thing I would do is, of course, reaching out, email them. So what I would recommend is to find at least 10 professors you think you want to reach out, and then email them being, hey, I'm a first year or a second year student at this university. I'm really interested in studying blah, 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 like the field of your interest and why you're interested in this lab specifically because they are working on you know list what they're currently working on that you might make contributions to and at the end showcase your skill i mentioned these are the courses i'm taking and i have a strong say computer science skill or wet lab skill highlight your skills and mention why you think you might be a good fit and lastly mention i'm really excited about potentially joining the lab is it possible to schedule a meeting with you to discuss it further and don't forget to attach your cv or a resume in the email so that they give a sense of your background and they're more likely to reply don't get discouraged if they don't reply you um, sometimes professors are very busy I got ghosted so many times in the job application process so you're not alone on average if you reach out to 10 professors around four or five might get back to you and out of the four or five maybe only one or two is able to offer you a position this is very common so don't take it personal and if the professor doesn't reply for a week what i would do is to send them a follow-up email mentioning that you're still very looking forward to potentially joining the lab and discuss further about the project and send your availability in the email and if you're lucky and the professor replied you and you're able to land a meeting with them what i would do is to go back onto their website and see what they're currently working on in the lab and then think a couple points that what skills you have can help them to succeed in the project so that kind of showcase you know this is what they're working on and how you can help them secondly what i would do is to search for their most recent publications and read the abstract at least the abstract of the publication so that you get a general sense of what work they have done so during the conversation with the professor you can mention oh i saw your work here i may have a bunch of questions in terms of how you approach this question or how do you solve this question I also mentioned getting involved in publications during research is very helpful to get you into really great graduate programs. Just a disclaimer, I actually don't have first author papers, meaning that I'm listed as the first author in the publication. So I didn't know that, but apparently they arrange your name based on the contributions you made. Um, first author obviously is the person who did majority of the work. It's essentially their project that gets published they're actually the main person who writes the paper as well. I was very lucky during the process. The projects I was involved in all get published at the end. Bear in mind that not all projects get published. So it's okay if you didn't have a publication at the end. And I also want to mention that publication is actually a long process. For all the projects I was involved in, it took at least three years for them to get published. So it will be very rare to publish a paper you know, during a very short internship, but as long as you make contributions and the project ended up getting published, your name will be on there. Before I get into research, um, I didn't know publication was a thing. I think it was actually a good thing. I didn't set a goal to be able to you know, have my name listed as authors in publications. My main goal was to just treat it as a full-time job and try to be as helpful as I can. So if someone come to me be like, hey, can you help me with this? Even though I have zero idea how to do it, I will try to look into it, try to learn, try to go on YouTube, Google, do as much as I can to help them to reach their goal. So I think don't set publication as your main goal to get out of your um, research experience. Just take it easy. Try as much as you can to learn as much as you can and be helpful. If your work doesn't get published, 
you have something that you can write in your personal statement or resume if your work gets published then that's even better right so definitely don't get fixated on the idea to get publication so that's all i have and hopefully it's informative for some of you guys who is looking for a research experience i hope you find your dream research position and please let me know if you ended up found one best of luck